We're here in Labor Day. It's hot out here. Mm -hmm. About like almost 92 degrees. Yeah. Uh, we went to Popeyes yesterday, ate some good old chicken. Yeah. <laughs> Fried. No, 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 no. We had barbecue chicken yesterday, right? Sweet and spicy wings. Sweet and spicy, spicy wings. wings. Yeah. Ooh, that thing was thingy licking good. <laughs> I wonder why they call Popeyes Popeye. I thought Popeyes is about spinach. Right. <laughs> but they got chicken. I don't see no spinach in Popeyes, so it must be something that started from New Orleans. Though we know Popeye always ate the spinach. That's right. Yeah, olive oil. And... Hey, Popeye! That brutal fighting over olive oil. She was skinny like a stick. <laughs> so we got to do a study why they call it Popeyes. Mm -hmm. I just like Popeye. Popeye the sale love. They don't show those cartoons on Nickelodeon mm -hmm. channel the way they used to. Right. Oh, wow. I, I still like watching cartoons. I got a kid in me. Mm -hmm. It's like Buzz Bunny. Mm -hmm. What's up, Doc? <laughs> Roll runner, beep beep. Right. <laughs> the coyote, he was always trying to trap up the row runner. Right. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's how the devil is. A lot of times, he reminds me of the coyote. Mm -hmm. Always trying to trap up, try to set trash for us. Yes. So it's the coyote was always trying to trap up the row runner. Mm -hmm. Beep beep. And he was mm -hmm. too hard to catch. <laughs> so every time he had a rock out there, he had a rock for the the coyote, but it always backfired. Right. The rock came and it hit the coyote. Yeah. But that's how it is. When the devil try to trap you up, <laughs> he's gonna fall in his own trap. Amen. Mm -hmm. Whatever enemy you try to trap you up, they're gonna fall in their own trap. But you know it's good to watch cartoons because mm -hmm. sometimes you can see cartoons through the eyes of God. So every time I saw that coyote and the road runner, beep beep. Mm -hmm. I thought about when David said that when they set a trap for you and when they set a pit for you they're going to fall in their own pit mm -hmm. so every time that coyote try to trap up the road runner he always fell in his own trap right. the guys like Elmer Fudd Stewie Wobbit Stewie Wobbit <laughs> Wobbit so he had like a stammering problem no 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 this one had a stammering problem it was um the Def pig Def oh yeah the pig I forgot the name of the pig. That's oh, all, yeah, folks. Right? <laughs> Porky Pig. Porky Pig. I remember right. Porky Pig. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God bless you. Put me in that picture, too. Ah, come on. Say something about the Lord, my good brother. Okay. God bless you, my brother. Amen. My good brother. You're on fire for God. I love your fire. Amen, good brother. You're too anointed to be disappointed. <laughs> love you, man. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is wonderful. Yeah, we grew up on those cartoons back right. in the day. Right. So he would talk about Porky the Pig. That's all, folks. Uh huh. I'm a fuck. You squee wabbit. Oh my. Wabbit. I'm a fuck. Look like that guy. Um, remember Lucy or Ball? Remember Fred? Right. Remember Fred like I'm a fuck like. I think, I think that's where I think the honeymooners came from the Flintstones. Okay. And Ralph Crandom. Right. Bang. Zoom. He always had an argument with. Alice, Alice, yeah. yeah. Fred, no, no, you said Ralph, you eat too much. Yeah. <laughs> now, I used to like Ed Norton, hey, Ruffy boy. <laughs> hey, Amen. The honeymooners, and I think that's where they got the um, the uh, Flintstones from. Yeah. Hey, Amen. So, I rather when we go on a honeymoon, we'd rather have the Holy Ghost on the honeymoon. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge God on your honeymoon. After you get married, acknowledge God on your honeymoon. Because God was the one who made the moon. So I was just using these different cartoons that we grew up on just as a parable. But Jesus always spoke in parables. Yeah. So we grew up on little cartoons now ain't the way they used to be. Mm. You had Family Guy now. Family Guy, that guy just is perverted. Mm. Big old fat man. <laughs> perverted. Oh, they're showing his behind. Right. Ugh. <laughs> and that little dog, a little pervert too. I forgot that little dog's mm -hmm. name. And cursing and stuff. Yeah, you're there cursing. Mm -hmm. Tied on cartoons ain't the way it used to be mm -hmm. when we was growing up. Mm -hmm. So like the but now when Popeye they had a little baby, my name was Sweepy. Mm -hmm. Sweepy was a problem. I mean, Sweepy was wanting to climb over, crawl over a mountain. Popeye was trying to save Sweepy and look like he'll get Popeye in trouble. Mm -hmm. Sweepy, he said like Sweepy, don't go over there. And then Sweet Pea wanted to crawl into the <laughs> the cage full of wild animals. <laughs> Sweet Pea, don't go over there. And Popeye would try to say Sweet Pea. And he'll end up getting in the cage and he end up getting trapped up. Oh my. Sweet Pea was a problem. Oh my mm -hmm. God, a little bad little baby. He might be Mr. Magoo. Mm -hmm. 
Remember Mr. Goo was so blind? Right. right. Oh, Mr. Big Goo. <laughs> Remember him? Uh-huh. I mean, uh, you know, Sweet Pea and him had a lot in common because they was always getting into trouble. Yeah. But <laughs> Sweet Pea got everybody else in trouble, but he never got in trouble. You know, like, there's a lot of people like that that have a Sweet Pea spirit. <laughs> Let me give you an example of people who have a Sweet Pea spirit. And I'm going to go into this question of this, of this statement this young man made because I want to encourage him. Mm-hmm. People who go to Yellowstone Park, Right. They go see these bisons, and they have a sign that says, stay, how many feet from the bisons? Uh, 25 feet. Stay 25 feet from the bisons. Many of you people don't listen. Uh-huh. I mean, do you want to die? Mm-hmm. Then these Asians, you know, they come all the way from China and uh, wherever they came from. We, we, wanna, we love Asians. Mm-hmm. Not racist, we love everybody. But don't, it says, stay 25 feet. Right, yeah, feet, feet from the bison. And y'all go right up there mm-hmm. with your cell phone and you want to take a snapshot mm-hmm. next to the bison. And you think the bison like you? Mm-hmm. The bison is minding mm-hmm. his business or her business. And you just want, hey, let's take a, a picture with the bison. Mm-hmm. Did it say, say 25 feet from the bison? Yeah. And what the bison do? Maul the person. The, the bison maul the person. Mm-hmm. Hicks you up in the air. Many of them almost got killed. And how are you sending a little child near the bison only six years old? Right. People do some stupid things. That's a sweet pea spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, people are possessed with a sweet, a sweet pea spirit and you dying an untimely death. Mm-hmm. A sweet pea spirit can tell you that's a, that, that's a deep topic to talk on. That's right. a spirit too because mm-hmm. you already realize that the one who created sweet pea was actually a Freemason. Mm-hmm. It was a Freemason that created that cartoon. I did some studies. A Freemason created the cartoon Sweet Pea. He wasn't sweet, but it had the, his, the, even the name was deceiving. Right. He wasn't sweet. Right. He was getting everybody else in trouble. He getting Popeye in trouble. He calls Popeye Olive Oil to argue. Popeye, protect Sweet Pea. Yeah. I'm trying to protect Sweet Pea, my yeah. best olive oil. He ended up getting in trouble, so he had to eat his spinach. Mm-hmm. And when Popeye took his spinach, he got stronger. That's why he's like, watch, watch Popeye. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I just like watch cartoons like that growing up. So many of you don't even realize that it was a Freemason, really, who created Sweet Pea. He's, mm. He was a cartoonist. Oh, we talking about Freemasons. Now we're talking about Balfamet. Oh, my God. We're talking about Balfamet as a demon. Mm-hmm. That means he was doing rituals. I forgot the man's name. I got to do a study. Uh, I forgot the man's name. It was a Freemason who created the, the, the cartoon Sweet Pea and put it in Popeye. Mm-hmm. So, therefore, look how deep this is. Those you got spiritual ears and spiritual eyes. That means there was a spirit in Sweet Pea. Mm. So notice, Sweet Pea really never got in trouble. He was always walking into trouble. It was a little baby, right? Mm-hmm. Little boy-headed baby that, that looked like Popeye. Mm-hmm. But the ones who were trying to protect him got in trouble because he, Sweet Pea, want to crawl near a hill or a mountain, a cliff. <laughs> right. Sweet Pea, Sweet Pea. Here come Popeye. And he ended up falling over the cliff. Then he crawling where crocodiles are at. Yeah. His mouth is open. Sweepy want to go in the mouth of crocodiles. <laughs> no, Sweepy never got hurt. Here come Popeye. Popeye is olive oil. Save, save, save my baby. Popeye and him getting caught in, in the alligator's mouth. Mm-hmm. She had to always pull out his spinach. So even in that is a spirit. Do you not know that when people have the mindset they want to jump off a high cliff, that's a Sweepy spirit? Mm-hmm. That's deep. That's a spirit. They, they climbing up top of these high cliffs. Some want to climb up top of high cliffs with no rope. Yeah. I mean, people do some dangerous things, and mm-hmm. this is why people die in timely deaths. People do some stupid things, like the bison thing. You keep, I mean, you would think that the tourists would have learned from the other mistakes that the others tourists by getting close to the bison yeah. at Yellowstone Park. Yeah. And the sign says, do stay 25 feet away from the bison and many of you are so in love with the, I don't know what it's about these bison mm-hmm. that people want to get up close to listen I ain't trying to get close to no bison I'm going to see a bison I'll stay from my distance mm-hmm. I'll stay more than 25 feet bisons are dangerous at least <laughs> don't want to get up close to a bison hey bison <laughs> patting his head hey bison bison minding his business hey bison and bison like, mm-hmm. that means he's getting ready to attack that means he's getting ready to attack now if you see a bison go mm-hmm. What that mean? He's angry. He's angry. He's saying, leave me alone. If he can talk like us, that's what he'll say. Leave me alone. Mind your business. 
I want to be with my bison wife, my bison children. <laughs> Do people listen? No, they want to take a selfie with the body. That's a sweepy spirit. Before you can know it, they get hurt. Mm. They're disobedient to the rules. Do you know that's what happened in the spirit world? God give us rules. He give us laws. And we disobey. many people disobey the law. They disobey God. So now you're getting in trouble. This is how we got in trouble in the first place. When Adam and Eve, well, we didn't, well, we didn't make this mistake, but Adam and Eve made the mistake when God gave them rules in the Garden of Eden. He told Adam and Eve, do not touch the tree of knowledge and of good and of evil. What did Adam and Eve do? They did just what God told them not to do. They were disobedient. <laughs> we could have been in the Garden of Eden right now if they would have been obedient. The Garden of Eden was like paradise. Mm -hmm. It was a peaceful place. God never intended for man to live in misery. But because of disobedience, God is trying to save us, but when we disobey him, do we get in trouble? Satan want to get us, see, the devil want to take our soul to hell. I ain't trying to go to hell. This son right here is hot enough. <laughs> this son, and, and please astronauts, don't even try to go to the sun. I know you'll do some risky stuff. Don't get no sweet pea spirit. I know you've been to the moon like Neil Armstrong did, mm -hmm. but don't try to go to no sun because if you go there, you know you're going to be disintegrated. Right. Don't let the enemy trick you. Because you're not going to make it going to no sun. Mm -hmm. The sun is cold compared to hell. Right. And when people disobey God, what happens is we get in trouble. People could have lived a long life. It would just learn how to use wisdom. People don't use wisdom. They want to be risky. We live in this millennium period where people want to do risky things, and take risk, and high risk, and, and just doing stupid things. I'm talking about educated people. There are people going in the zoo. There's a one guy... Um, who went in the zoo, I don't know how he did this, and he jumped where the lions was at. Yeah. That's stupid. Mm. The man, I don't know how he did it, but he jumped right where the lions was at, mm -hmm. and he got mauled by the lions. Now, why would you want to jump where, no, not where the lions was at, where tigers was at? Yeah, the tiger. uh -huh. Now, wow. he brought that upon himself. Now, this was an educated man right. who jumped in a den of tigers. Now, this guy was crazy. He jumped where tigers was at. That's stupid. Yeah. You know tigers ain't going to be good to you. <laughs> They're going to try to kill you. Now, this was an educated man doing this. Sweet pea spirit. <laughs> I wouldn't try to save him. <laughs> if you put themselves in these predicaments and God gave you warning, you got signs saying, warning, don't go there. And you go there anyway because you want to follow your friends. What did Jesus say? Broad is the way that leads to destruction and many is going that path. He said, take the straight gate and not broad. Jesus done gave us warning at the Bible. It takes more than just a jump and a shout. You got to read that word and obey him. A lot of folks jump and shout but don't obey him. So Jesus already gave us warning. God always gave Israel warnings. Don't worship idols. Don't worship witchcraft. Don't do devil worship. They do the opposite. Let me tell you a story of what happened to me. I had to learn from my mistakes. Because I grew up in Harlem, born in the Bronx. I was in Harlem. You know, I've been preaching the gospel since I was six years old. Now, I'm going to get to this statement of this young man. I want to encourage him. I remember I was walking in Harlem, 125th Street. I had to finish preaching the word. And usually in the summertime, I like walking on the bridge. It's close to, you know, I, I don't always, you know, always take the bus or the subway. This is years ago. Never forget this. And I heard a voice that told me, do not walk towards the bridge going up straight. I heard a voice say, go left. I knew it was the Holy Spirit that said, go left. But did I listen? I was like them guys in Yellowstone Park when they read <laughs> the sign, uh -huh. do not touch the bison. Straight 20 feet, friendly bison. And they go right, take a cell phone, hey bison. Well, did I listen? I had a sweet pea spirit. I knew it was God telling me, don't go straight. He said, go left, go to the other bridge. Well, I didn't listen. I went walking straight. Out came a, uh, out came a rock wheeler. Man, that rock wheeler built my leg. Oh my God, it was a mercy of God that rock wheeler didn't tear my leg off. I had to plead the blood and the owner said, sorry for my rock wheeler bite. You had to go get shots that night, gravy shots that night, but that was my fault. Because if I would have listened to the voice of God, when the Lord told me, do not go that direction, he said, go left. If I would have listened to the voice of God, that wouldn't have happened. But because of my disobedience, many of you see the rules. Some of y'all will see the rules where it said, nah, this, I'm guilty of this now. How many times you saw someone say, don't walk? <laughs> <laughs> right. 
and we still walked, even though it's because there were no cars in the street. I do that all the time. I'm gonna be honest. Now, you know it has to be rules in life because look, we got the red light stands for do not cross the light because the people got to cross the street, right? Then the green light stands for you can go. You got people who will see a green light, no, a red light, and they'll still cross the red light. Now they can run somebody over. See, it has to be rules and regulations even in the city mm -hmm. to keep order. Tell someone order in the court. I preached a message in the Baptist church years ago in Harlem called order in the court. There has to be some order. There has to be order in your family. There has to be order. And it's called discipline. If you don't learn how to discipline your children, your children is going to walk over you. I'm telling you now. And you say, oh, I love my child. You know, you're spoiling your child. That's not love. <laughs> then you leave some rough love. Ah. Uh, my mom spanked me when I needed spanking. I, I needed it because I was doing bad things. Some of you thought your mother was the meanest woman in the world, but listen, when you grow older, you say, well, I thank God for mommy for spanking me when I did wrong because it has to be some discipline. Father has to have discipline. I didn't, I didn't say be abusive. I didn't say abuse your child. I didn't say molest your child. You got to protect your child, not molest your child. I say discipline. There has to be discipline when it comes to marriage, when it comes to raising the family. It has to be discipline. It has to be order. There's a lot of churches that ain't got no order. There's a lot of family ain't got no order. You got kids tearing up the house, running all around the place. The parents have to discipline. You have to discipline your children and teach them order. First of all, order for you to teach your children order, you got to have order. Because if the parents don't have order, how are you going to teach your children order? Because your children are watching what do you do. If you're selling drugs, what's going to happen? Your child going to sell, want to sell drugs too. If you're watching your mother bringing all these men in the house and she having sex with all these deadbeat dads and he ain't paying child support, he's being a sperm donor. Every time you turn around, she got a new boyfriend. <laughs> he's a sperm donor. Now you're doing this in front of your daughters. After a while, your daughter going to feel it's okay for her to do it when she grow up because she's watching what you do. Now, now you're telling your daughter, Oh, I don't want you to be no prostitute. Okay, great. But you know what your daughter going to say? Well, how can you tell me, mommy, not to be a whore and you a whoring around? Don't you talk to me like that, girl? And you say, pop. Now you slap her in the mouth, but your daughter is telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. She's watching how you live. There's no order. <laughs> it has to be order in the families. There's a lot of children who don't have order. Many of you mothers don't teach your daughter or uh, your son. Uh, many of you fathers are not teaching your sons not to bully other children. There's no order. There's a lot of churches that don't have no order. There's no rules. We're living in days that people do not want to follow justice. Why you think it's bad things going on in the court? No justice. No order. <laughs> I know they have a parade, some, not parade, they have a thing going on. No justice, no peace. No Jesus, no peace. <laughs> if you're going to preach justice, I'm going to preach Jesus. No Jesus, no peace. He, as loving as Jesus is, even he has order. He said, if you love me, Keep my commandments. He said, abide in my words. He said, let my words abide in you. Even God has order in heaven. So I want to encourage this young man. I just wanted to put that out there because we have a nice time here on Labor Day. Even though I don't know what Labor Day means right now. <laughs> but we're laboring for the Lord, laboring the kingdom. Jesus said laborers are few. I guess Labor Day means people who work hard. You know, I guess they take rest. God rested on the seventh day after he created the heavens and the earth. There's a young man that came to my YouTube here. Jamon, God bless you. Jamon Jeremiah, that's a nice name. Jamon Jeremiah, thanks for making the comment on my YouTube. You left a nice comment here. My message on this YouTube was, uh, I mean, my message was, don't give up. It's not too late. When people was being encouraged, what was on the YouTube. You said here on the comment, the enemy is trying to use fear on my job. Yes, he does. A lot of us dealt with that on jobs. I dealt with that on my job. Every time I mention God, people look at me crazy. Yeah, people look at you crazy now when you talk yeah, about God. Because they so used to hearing my nigga. Right. <laughs> they so used to hearing slang and curse words until when you say God bless you, people not used to hearing God bless. Yeah. People not used to be people not used to hearing people say God bless you. They used to hearing people say, My nigga. Mm. You're not my nigga, you're my brother. You're not my nigga, you're supposed to be my sister. <laughs> people are so used to hearing curse words. People are so used to hearing slang, bad slang languages that when someone come out and say, hey, God bless you, people are not used to hearing that because they used to hear the negative. So when you say, so when they finally hear somebody say something positive, they're like, wow, somebody said something positive to me. They're not used to hearing good languages. Now you're talking about God, so people think you're crazy because you're talking about God. But the Bible said, God used the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. The preaching of the gospel is like foolishness to people who don't believe. 
I believe somewhere in First Corinthians, chapter number two, chapter three, and we Second Corinthians. So yes, we're in this world, but not of the world. So a lot of times when you talk about God, how you know how good God is, yeah, sometimes people do look at you funny and crazy, like, oh, he's crazy, she's crazy, because they talking about God. Why? Because people are not used to hearing people talk about God. They used to hearing people talk about Beyonce, <laughs> and Beyonce is a witch. Still, uh, Jay-Z, he's also a devil worshiper too. They used to hear him about Lady Gaga. Oh, Michael Jackson, you know Lady Gaga, she made a pact with the devil too. People are used to hearing about rappers and rap stars and Biggie Smalls and Leah, Jay-Z uh, Jay and all these. They're not used to hearing people on the bus talk about God. Very seldom do you hear people talk about God. Right. Most of the time you hear, yo, my nigga, yo, what's up, yo, 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 yo. People are used to hearing that. They're not used to hearing Jesus loves you. They're not used to hearing God bless you. They're not used to hearing encouragement. So when you talk about God, then they think you're crazy because people are not used to hearing that. So they give you a funny look. Wow, somebody's finally saying something good. <laughs> Now, you, because people been hypnotized to 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 watch, to watch violent movies in Hollywood. Hollywood is full of Satanists. People sold their soul to the devil. So yeah, so I'm going back to what you said. They look at you crazy, and they say things under their breath. You said it's weird. Yeah. People are rude, but act so nice with me. It's pretty childish and creepish. But I had an episode with my last job before I quit. So I, so if them folks call. My other job are what now they are acting the same way. I just want to make my money and look and look after my family. The spiritual warfare has really elevated in my life, but I gotta count it all joy, right? You're right, amen. You said count it all joy, amen. Amen. God bless you, sir. Today, tomorrow, and forever. Well, thank you for that wonderful comment. God bless you too. I want to encourage you, my brother. If you weren't on the right track, the devil wouldn't be fighting against you. If you wasn't serving the Lord, if you was not doing the right thing, the enemy would have no reason to worry about you. So obviously you're on the right track. I know you're among unbelievers who don't believe in God. Some may be Muslims or Buddhists. And you talk about God. You have a joyful spirit. There's a lot of people on the job who are mean. You got a lot of mean supervisors. You have a lot of mean bosses on the job who are trying to sex you up. They're jealous. They're trying to get you fired off your job, especially if you love Jesus. Yeah, darkness and light has no fellowship because if darkness is in them, they don't feel comfortable around the light that's in you because the Bible says we are a peculiar people. We are a holy generation. We are a royal priesthood. The Bible also said that we are in this world, but we are not of the world. So, yeah, um, it is rough because you're trying to take care of your family. You're trying to pay rent and bills, and they make it harder for you just to work because they're fighting against you on your job just because you love Jesus. Because we live in days with, like Jesus said, men love darkness more than light. Like a lot of good girls love the bad boys. Now, if you love bad boys, that don't sound good to me. And why would you like a bank robber? <laughs> a bank robber who go around robbing banks and shooting up people. Now, that don't sound like a good girl to me. That sounds like something evil in you there. Because ain't no real good girl wants to get rid of a real bad boy. But look like to me, a lot of you so-called good girls, you love these roughnecks who like to fight. And he's beating you up, slapped you in the face, and you kiss the, and you kissing the very ground he walk on. There was a case where a woman was getting beat up by a man. And she had the chance to get out of it. She even called the cops. But she said, no, I want to stay with him because I'm in love. Then there's something wrong. The man was beating her up and she didn't want to leave the man. She should stay with the man anyway. And the man killed her. Mm -hmm. Something wrong with that. <laughs> something, that that's, that's a problem there. When you want to stay with somebody abusive or stay with an abusive woman or an abusive man. So now we live in days where it seems like people love the bad more than the good. If you got your pants up, they think you're crazy. If you got your drawers half showing and your pants half down, or they think, that's cool, yo, that's cool. It ain't cool to me. I don't want my drawers showing. <laughs> I don't want to see nobody dirty drawers. I want my, well, I don't got no dirty drawers. I mean, that's private everything. I'm clean, but you know what I'm talking about. Right? I don't want nobody to see my drawers. I like my pants up. I believe in discipline. But we live in days and men like to be showing their drawers and got their pants half down. Many don't even realize that represents rape. When a man in prison rapes another man, he pulls his pants down. And he has his belt tied around his waist. Many don't even realize what that represents. When you have your pants half down and your jaws half shown, many don't realize that represents rape. When a man rapes another man in prison, that came from the prison system. Many don't realize that. So you're watching all the rappers, and you want to be like 
these rappers who was rapping about death and all death row and rapping about killing, those are wrong role models. So you're trying to be like the rappers. who They think they're gangsters. A lot of these guys are not no real gangsters. They try to be a gangster. Some of the real gangsters is on the street, and some of the real gangsters are real quiet. So don't think because a man is loud that he ain't tough. So many of you want to be like the rappers. So now people has been hypnotized to think that doing wrong is really good. So if you're talking about God on the job and you have the love of Jesus, then they say, oh, yeah, he crazy. Because a lot of people have made a pact with the devil to get those jobs. A lot of supervisors have made a pact with the devil to get those jobs. Some of them solely sold to the devil in their own blood to get those jobs. Some of them don't even have education. And you wonder how they got those jobs. So here you'll come along and you love Jesus and you're around a lot of unbelievers who are cursing and smoking, still doing witchcraft. Yes, they don't feel comfortable around a Christian because the demons are afraid of the Jesus that's in you. Because Jesus is the devil's biggest nightmare. Because there's power that's in the name of Yahshua, Hamashiach, Yahshua. So I want to encourage you, my good brother. Keep up the great work you're doing because God understands you have to make money. God understands you're trying to take care of your family. I know it's not easy in this world that we're living in, but you're going to make it. I hear the Lord say, you're going to make it. Through hard trials and tribulation, you're going to make it. Through persecution, you're going to make it. Not just only for you, my good brother, for all those who are serving the Lord. God said, you're going to make it. Oh, yes, they cursed that Jesus. They ain't like Jesus. You know, when you're serving the Lord, yeah, you know, long you was a sinner and you was not saved, when you was going to the parties and smoking weed and you was dancing in the club, oh, everybody loved you then. By the time you decide, decide to follow Jesus, oh, he crazy. Oh, she going to church. Oh, they don't smoke no more. Right, right, because now you decide to follow Jesus. You're trying to do the right thing. Sometimes you get to cut off the wrong crowds. Some of them crowds you in, it doesn't mean they're your friend. Everybody laughing in your face is not always your friend. If you got a girlfriend that's lusting after your husband, oh, come on, that's not your friend. That's an associate, and she's a woman Judas. <laughs> Okay, sometimes you got to be careful who, how you pick your friends. If you got a girlfriend always flirting with your boyfriend, or uh, she flirting around with your husband, that is not your friend. She's a jealous Judas. Right. Every guy who act like this because you're laughing in your face, it doesn't mean he's your friend. Ah, Jesus is my best friend who stick is closer than a brother. Can't nobody love you like Jesus. So many of you uh, uh, hang around the wrong crowds. Let me tell you some real friends, it's not going to lead you the wrong way. Real friends is going to lead you the right way. Real friends will tell you when you're, when you're going the wrong way. They'll tell you in love. If they see you going the wrong way, a real friend will take you to the side and say, Honey, girlfriend, don't go that way. Or that's the wrong man you with. He's abusive. Not trying to get into your business. But a real friend will correct you in love because they don't want to see you go the wrong way. That's a real friend. Hey, my brother, don't go that way. That's the wrong way. But they're going to correct you in love. They're not going to try to embarrass you. They're not going to spread your business all around the church. They're not going to gossip on you. They're not going to backbite you. Some people, you can't tell your business to everybody. Because your business be all over the Facebook. <laughs> your business be all over the Instagram. Like, how do people know my business? Your girlfriend done told all your business. The one who you think that's your friend. And then have you ever noticed every time God bless you with a good man, all of a sudden now your girlfriend getting jealous? She don't want to see you with a good man. Now she talking about, oh, oh, don't be with him. He no good. That's because she wanted your man. Oh, come on. As long as you were single, as long as you were by yourself and didn't have no love in your life, oh, she didn't mind being your friend then. Time God bless you with a good man. Now your friend is acting funny. Be jealous. Time God give you a nice wife. You'll find out who your real friends are when God begins to bless you in a relationship. So I know it's not easy. Even in church, a lot of church people act like that. And I'm jumping and shout. Huh. They jump and shout and then they pout after they didn't jump and shout. So I want to encourage my brother. I'm going to say a prayer of faith right for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, right now, touch my brother from the crowns of his head to the soles of his feet. All those who are listening to me right now on YouTube land, in the name of Jesus, touch him right now. Bless him and his family. Bless him and his children. I know it's hard. I know you get depressed along the way. But continue to bless him. Bless him and his wife. Bless him and his children. Bless all those who have been depressed. Give somebody a peace of mind. Somebody want to commit suicide. Don't let them do it. You don't have to take no drug overdose. All you need is the Holy Ghost. Again, the Holy Ghost is even better than taking a drug overdose. Uh, you'd be surprised at me for walking around smiling on the outside, but crying on the inside. I hear the Lord say he'll turn your tears into joy. We've been making dear for the night, but joy will come in the morning time. This is your time for peace. This is your time for joy. 
Read the book of Isaiah chapter 42, verse number, oh, no, Isaiah chapter 43, verse number two. I want you to read that, my brother and sisters out there. Also read the book of Songs chapter 68, verse one. It said, let God arise and let all his enemies be scattered. I want you to read that. I want you to write all your enemies' name on the paper. Put it in that particular scripture, Psalms chapter 68, verse 1. Let God arise and let all his enemies be scattered. I want you to read the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 28, verse 1 to verse 14. It talks about the blessing plan. It's how I make you the head and not the tail. If you keep God's holy word. If you keep God's holy commandments. Also want you to read the book of St. John chapter 14. It said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. That's one of my favorite chapters. In my father's house, there are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. He said, when I come again, I will receive you into myself. And there where I am, there he may be also. Read the book of Revelations, chapter number 21. It talks about the holy city, the streets of gold. And also Revelation chapter number 22. It talks about the streets of gold, where the saints of God is going to be with after Jesus Christ. Uh, rapture up the church, first the Antichrist. Is going to take over the world. He's going to be the deceiver after the church is raptured up by Jesus Christ. Um, then after that, there's going to be something called the millennium period. Millennium means a thousand years. We're going to reign with Jesus Christ for a thousand years here on earth. After that, then the Armageddon, then judgment. Praise God. Then the wicked is going to be destroyed and cast in the lake of fire. Death and hell will be cast in the lake of fire. According to Revelation chapter 20, verse 14, uh, we're all going to stand before God, before the white throne of judgment. We're all going to be judged. The goats will be on the left and the sheep will be on the right. And whoever name is not found written in the land book of life shall be cast in the lake of fire. But if your name is in the book of life, you will have eternal life to be with Jesus Christ. God gets something called New Jerusalem, the streets of gold that he has prepared for his people, those who are suffering right now in this world, going through for the name's sake of Jesus. That's why Jesus said, the Bible said, if you suffer with him, that you're going to reign with him. So I know it's hard, but one day our struggle is going to be over. Ah, praise God. One day it's going to be no more dying. No more sickness, no more racism, no more gun violence. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. Uh, read the book of Revelation chapter 21. The Bible says, and God will wipe away all tears. I like that. From the eyes. Praise God. So he'll wipe away all tears from your eyes. It'll be no more death. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be life. Jesus is going to be the son. It'll, it'll be no need to have a son. One day it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. There'll be no violence on the earth, no racism, no none of this gun violence going on, no jealousy. God going to send the wicked to hell, the lake of fire. And that's why Jesus paid the price on the cross to shed his blood for us, the lost. So we can so you can wash away our sins so we can have eternal life to be with Jesus Christ. Read the book of St. John, chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. So read that. Those are words of comfort. Praise God. Praise God for the principle. So keep on keeping on and God's going to bless you. And all those out there in YouTube land, keep on keeping on. And when the praises go up, the blessings will come down. So pass this video on to somebody who may be discouraged. Because one of the biggest things the devil used against us is a spirit of discouragement. He uses it against me all the time because I'm the one preaching the gospel. If I was selling drugs and being the pimp on the street, then the devil would have no need to try to discourage me then. But when you're trying to do the right thing and serving God, Yes, the enemy tries to discourage you because you're trying to do the right thing. He sends temptation. He sends discouragement on the jobs, in our homes, um, in the schools. Praise God. But keep your eyes on the prize. Woo! Praise God, the Prince of Peace. Keep your eyes on the prize who is Jesus Christ. I also want you to read the book of Ephesians, chapter number 6, verse 10. Start from verse number 10 and read all the way to the last verse. That's going to help you get stronger spiritually and also emotionally, okay? God bless you in YouTube land. Your friend, the gospel street pastor, preacher Warren. God bless you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God for the...